Hello, creatures possessing the capacity for sentience. I am Patrick Smith. This is Disenthrall. We have another awesome user submission today. I thought I was going to have trouble, like, finding content that uh, would be worthy of your attention, but people are doing that for us, so uh, thank you for that. Remember, if you have something that you'd like to see discussed, have a question, check out the content submission form link in the description. Today, we have a article submitted by Barbara Finch. Uh, on Dan Larimer's universal basic income, and he and she gives us a, a link to Steam it, asking for my take on this idea. So we see over here on Steam it, grand unified political theory, anarchy, libertarianism, capitalism, and socialism, by Dan the Man. Dan uh, Daniel Larimer is a co-founder of uh, Steam it. He's also the CTO of EOS, uh, an, up, uh, an up and coming platform that I'm excited about that will hopefully kick the hell out of Ethereum. And uh, let's see, he also did BitShares, which is a decentralized cryptocurrency exchange, which uh, I was really excited about. Uh, it doesn't seem to be where it doesn't seem to be there yet. I hope it gets there. Anyway, so because he's the co founder of Steemit itself, it bears mentioning that there is a certain amount of danger in commenting on this, especially because I'm going to post this video on Steemit, because the way Steemit works is if someone that has a high reputation, which of course he does, being one of the co-founders of Steemit, he's got a very high reputation with a large following. If someone with a high reputation downvotes your post for whatever reason, it has a large negative effect on your reputation. Uh, that will then hurt your reach on the platform that will then make it much less uh, profitable for you to use the platform. So there's a sort of a danger in uh, being critical of people that are on Steemit with high reputations because I don't know this guy and uh, I've kind of read ahead to kind of be prepared for this because it's a long article. Uh, and it should be pointed out that one of the downsides of Steemit is these whales, these uh, high reputation people, when they downvote, it's a big deal. It's a big negative. But I don't give a shit. We're going to do it because truth is way more important than my Steemit rating and, and whatever Steam bucks I'm able to get. By the way, every single one of our videos, all of our content, uh, gets cross-posted to Steemit. So if you want to help us out in that way, instead of Patreon or in addition to Patreon, please go give us your Steemit upvotes. Here's the article, and it's a long one, and I was a little unsure about how to tackle this article without... Um, uh, and keep the video short and, and reasonably sized. So to that end, I'm going to summarize the article, read a couple relevant paragraphs, kind of give my response, and that will be that. If you have questions, if you have objections to what I say, uh, corrections, something I got wrong in my summary, put them in the comments, please. I will attempt to respond, especially if I get something wrong enough that this video sort of needs redressing. So. Uh, I want to start with the conclusion of this article, actually. Uh, so, conclusion. There's a system that is free from politics, violence, and manipulation whereby honest individuals can trade amongst themselves while respecting both the property rights and the birthright of every individual. If this system were voluntarily, voluntarily adopted by all of the proponents of socialism, then it would become one of the largest currencies in the world, and each individual's basic income could be sufficient to cover their daily food, shelter, clothing, and health care. There would be no need for taxation, which would save the economy hundreds of billions of dollars in accounting overhead every year, blah, blah, blah. The, the reduced taxation and regulatory burden combined with the politically neutral market-based approach would bring the capitalist, conservative, libertarians on board and further grow the economic power behind the token and therefore the minimum standard of living afforded by our birthright, birthright interest in our planet and our universe. So I, I don't know this guy. I don't follow him. I don't know where he sits politically. He definitely, I don't think, has a good understanding of libertarian principle. Uh, because my summary of this idea is uh, communism by crypto token. Um, so basically making a, a cryptocurrency token that's distributed equally to everyone that is alive on the planet uh, that they then can use to buy any real estate type resources, any, any, of, the, um, any of the rivalrous limited uh, resources on the planet don't redistribute wealth. The, the root of the conflict between capitalists and socialists is that one wishes to redistribute property which the other perceives as theirs. There is obviously a moral problem with stealing from one person to give to another, but that doesn't make the capitalist right and the socialist wrong. Both sides are wrong. 
both sides are right. The capitalist is wrong in believing that they own something they don't. And the socialist is wrong in believing that they must take something by force that rightfully belongs to the capitalist. The problem is the word redistribute. And the root of the problem is the belief that all of the world is already owned by somebody. Two people crash on a deserted island. One lands near the only tree with fruit and the other on a barren beach. The man near the fruit will naturally claim ownership of the tree and the man on the beach will cry foul. The island existed before they both arrived. Neither individual has the right to make any claims. At most, you can say they each have a 50% interest in the island. Before any resources can be allocated, both men must agree. Once they agree, all trades are final. If one man agrees to let the other man have the fruit in exchange for the right to the beach and everything on it, then that is fair in trade. Uh, after this trade, if the man on the beach is hungry because he's unable to catch fish, then he has no moral right to ask for the fruit to be redistributed. Distribution has already occurred. And this is the last, I think, uh, the last section that needs to be read. The Earth is an island. Imagine the Earth is an island floating in space that we all crash on. No one has any more right to the Earth's resources than anyone else. In order to fairly distribute the Earth's natural resources, we give every man, woman, and child a token representing one share in the Earth. All resources can then be auctioned off to the highest bidder using shares as money. Proceeds of the sales are paid to each proportional to their shares. Through this process, all the world's resources can be fairly distributed. I believe that resources should be allocated fairly across time and space, and all people, regardless of where or when they were born, have equal claim on the Earth and should be allowed an equal share in Earth, Inc. So, there's a few issues here with this article. Um, the capitalist is wrong in believing that they own something. So... There really is only one fundamental property ethic that has been worked out over the thousands of years of human existence that has been shown to reduce the rivalrous nature, the fighting, the conflict, the death and destruction over the scarce resources that we have on the planet. The socialists and communists take that property system based on a single rule, and I'm going to call it the neo-Lockean property system, because Locke, I don't know how deep to get into this, but we only have a few more minutes, so let me, let me just try and nail the important points. So uh, Locke said to, own, to come to own something, you separate it from nature, you mix your labor with it. That's kind of where it gets a sort of um, socialist um, labor theory of value nature uh, that it doesn't need. And then by, by virtue of separating it and mixing your labor with it, that thing um, is yours. And, and the third sort of unspoken Part of that that's that's just happens by the make first use of it, separate it from nature, is you make first use of it. You get there first. You mix your labor with it, separate it from nature. So it's kind of a three rule thing. Two out of those three rules are are unnecessary, the superfluous, uh, and really the fundamental way that we reduce rivalrous uh, the rivalry, fights, conflict over scarce resources is just the one rule. Make first use of a resource. If you get there first that thing becomes yours. Full stop. If, it, if the rule isn't simple, then conflict arises out of it. And the rule can't get any, get any more simple than that. If you get there first, it is yours. If you use it first, that thing belongs to you. You could also call this homesteading. It just it takes that, those Lockean rules, it simplifies them down to the bare metal, the only thing you need to understand, to understand property. That's it. Everything else that gets added by communists and socialists are caveats uh, to that, are limitations on that, are things that complicate and make that rule more messy, thereby injecting more conflict and more rivalrousness into the private property uh, system. Uh, rules that aren't necessary and rules that make the system objectively and practically speaking less effective at being a property system, because the whole point of having a property system is to reduce the conflict over scarce resources. So it bears it bears mentioning that to do that, you need the simplest, smallest set of rules that leave the least um, pathways to conflict possible. So, for instance, you take the make first use of rule, and then you let a commie or a socialist have it, and they'll say, oh, well, private property doesn't exist. You basically only own the resources that you possess while you possess them. That's a little bit of a simplification, but that's kind of what it means. So it puts a limitation on 
Uh, so you, you, you make first use of something. It belongs to you while you're using it or while you possess it. And then when you go home for the night or when you take a vacation or when you visit another city to check to, to work somewhere else, well, suddenly you don't own that anymore and somebody else could potentially come and own it. How long do you have to be away from the resource? How frequently do you have to use the resource? What if it's a resource that's meant to only be used once a, once a month? And, uh, and the private property ethic is that, you know, you walk away from something for a couple of weeks. Like, it, it, my point is, without doing a full digression into the problem with the communist or socialistic uh, anti-private property schemes, is that they inject complications, additional questions, and additional points of rivalrousness into the property system, which make it, even if, put ethics aside and just take it pragmatically, Pragmatically, their system is more rivalrous, which makes it a less effective, less desirable property system. And this is an attempt, and depending on what, how well he understands libertarianism, and I don't know the guy again, he might. Uh, if he understands libertarianism, then this is kind of, uh, he's trying to, it feels like he's trying to trick some people that don't really understand pr property, private property and property rights into accepting a semi sort of quasi communistic system of property ownership. And another thing he says is all people, regardless of where or when they were born, have equal claim on the earth and should be allocated an equal share in Earth Inc. That is to assume that you just have you just have some innate right by virtue of your existence to exclusive control over a piece of the planet, which is a scarce resource. It, irrespective of how many humans are ever created, irrespective of how many planets humans ever live on, irrespective of whether you're a completely useless, lazy person who does absolutely no work and generates nothing for the universe, you somehow, by virtue of merely being, I guess, sentient and existing, are owed by the universe, I suppose, a little piece of the pie. That's not how the universe works. The universe is brutal. The universe don't give any fucks about you, your existence, or your sentience. If you don't get off your ass and work to provide food and sustenance and shelter for yourself, you're going to die. And it, I, I don't like how he mixes, uh, how, it, how people and maybe him to a certain degree mix sort of, uh, what's the word when you assign human attributes to something that doesn't have them? I think it's anthropomorphize. So when you like anthropomorphize the universe into something that has um, agency that can actually act in the world, the 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 universe owes you something. The universe the universe will kill you if you don't get off your ass and work. No, it's not like that. It it doesn't do that. But the nature of existing in this universe is that you know it's all sort of trending towards entropy. It's all sort of you know if you don't act to keep your atoms together and functioning, your atoms will stop functioning and eventually disperse themselves uh, into the mother earth that you supposedly <laughs> own a, a piece of. You are owed nothing is the summary. No one owes you anything, much less a non-sentient thing called the universe or the earth. From the time you're born until as long as you can keep your atoms functioning, you have to fight to survive, to keep your property in working order and to make the environment around you into the way that you would be most comfortable. And, and history has shown in, in every communist paradigm ever that when you distribute resources based on need, or in this case, based on your mere existence, which seems like an even looser definition than need, it results in tragedy and mass death because it eliminates people's drive to succeed because it eliminates their ability to really create their environment in the way that they want it. If you want to work, if you want to live in a nice house, then you better provide a lot of value to the world to compete with your fellow humans that are also seeking what they want to make, to fashion the scarce resources around them into what they want. So one of the lines in here, uh, distribute our national, our, our natural inheritance. If you imagine the earth is owned by a single corporation and this corporation pays all people one share of stock per day, uh, and anyone who wishes to take resources from earth must pay them, uh, must buy them from the corporation at auction, then you can imagine how wealth can be distributed to all without taking from anyone. So if you imagine that everything is owned by a central authority or central property owner, communism, uh, then uh, then you can imagine how you don't have to take anything from anybody because we've already taken everything from everybody. 
So then the, the next line here is, once the resources are purchased from Earth, Inc., they become the private property of individuals. And so then it seems to kind of evolve it forward into an actual private property system, uh, kind of like the one the capitalists would want. So this is, uh, this is a strange article that, I mean, obviously this isn't exactly doable, but it seems like it wants to just like hit a big reset button that sort of robs every single person on the planet of their private property to put it in a massive communistic pool uh, to which then you pay out communistically shares to all the people, not according to their need even, just according to their mere existence. Again, just all the problems with communism fall out of this. If you expect to have entrepreneurs creating amazing new technologies, where's their incentive? They're going to get paid one earth share a day where they can buy their, you know, one hot in a cot, just like everybody else. If you could hit this massive reset button, which you cannot, you're just, you would be instituting a, a platform of communism until somehow the people with more social influence would probably uh, wheel and deal to accrue um, probably an unbalanced share of the, of the resources of the private property. And then, of course, then you would have a private property system that would allow them to sort of lord that over everyone in a semi-monopoly gained through this weird communist system. So those are my thoughts. If you think I have something wrong, if you think I got something out of whack or backwards, or if you agree with me and, and you uh, agree with my assessment, please let me know in the comments. I, 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 wa I always want this show to be more of a conversation than like a one way, hey, I'm gonna read and discuss these things with you. So I look forward to talking to you. Please remember to check out our Patreon. If you like this content, help us make more. Be an activist by helping our activism in the world by spreading our ideas through content like this. Thanks for watching. Oh, <laughs>